Hello friends and welcome back to A Christian Woman's Journey. Today I want to talk about 2023 as it comes to a close for us. 2023 was the toughest year of my life and it got me to thinking that, you know, it may have been a really tough year for a lot of people for so many reasons. So I wanted to share a little bit about my own experience, which will be an experience. My experience was specifically with grief. And I think I'll share that a little bit more at the end of the video. But I want to share also just a lot of things that may have made people's lives difficult this year. And I wanted to hopefully find a way to present scripture. Scripture is what really helps me. And it's what I feel can help other people. So if you, you may have had a very difficult 2023 for any of a number of reasons, and I am going to go through a list of those and share some scripture. You may be so eager for 2023 to be over. I know I kind of am. You may be a little bit apprehensive about 2024. And, um, you know, part of me is too, but I want to at the same time look forward with hope. And if I can help you look forward with hope, I'd like to be able to do that as well. A big difficulty that I know hits a lot of people are financial struggles. And I know with increasing costs out there, a lot of people have really been hit. That's why I've been trying to make some videos surrounding saving money. But if you've been hit by financial struggles this year, let me try to offer you some scripture that might be able to help. Philippians 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That can give us really a lot of hope. Matthew 6 verses 31 and 32. Therefore take no thought saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. So God, God already knows. God can and will help. So I also want to encourage everyone, you know, we as Christians are supposed to help one another. Please don't be afraid if you need help to ask for help. Um, you can go to churches, pantries. There are forms of public assistance. Please do not be ashamed if you've been hit with really tough times to reach out and ask for help. Again, that's one of the reasons why I try to make some of the money saving videos. It helps us all to be good stewards. And I have been there with financial struggles. Fortunately, we're doing a little bit better now. But I've been there in life with terrible finance, financial struggles, not really knowing where the next bit of money or, or food is coming from. Um, so I do know how that feels. And um, I, I do want my videos to really be a help to people in that area. Okay, so other areas of struggle that I, I know people who've had things, things like this happen to them. Um, maybe a spouse walked out on you. Maybe a friend stopped talking to you. One of the things that helps me, like I say, is to really go to scripture but to really understand the life of Jesus and to understand that a lot of the struggles that we have, he had a lot of those struggles too. So let me share some scripture with you now. Jesus shared a lot of the same pain that we have. This is John 6, 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So Jesus experienced disciples just turning their backs on him and walking away. And actually, in this particular passage, he had just fed the 5,000. He had just told them that he is the bread of life. And he experienced the pain of people just turning around and walking away. You know, let's also think about the agony in the garden when Jesus knew he was about to go to the cross. And he asked his apostles something rather simple. Please stay awake. Please watch with me. And we know that when he went back to them, they had drifted off to sleep. Matthew 26, verse 40. What? You could not watch with me one hour? Jesus, Jesus felt that. He felt that. He felt that desertion in those moments. And what happened right after that? When Jesus was arrested, his apostles scattered. Matthew 
26, verse 56. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. How painful must that have been for Jesus? So it leads me to understand that he understands my pain. He understands your pain related to desertion. Turn to him. In 2023, you may have faced a health issue. I know I just had surgery a couple days ago. Fortunately, it was nothing very, very serious. But you may have faced very serious, very debilitating, even life-threatening health challenges. So scripture also speaks on this. Um, Years ago, I had a pastor's wife who she was very, very ill. And she was just amazing at, you know, presenting this scripture and explaining to us how it was a comfort to her, how we really just need to trust God. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmaries, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. We need to turn to God for strength. In 2023, there could have been so many struggles you may have faced, a huge setback, disappointment, job loss, church hurt. God sees it all. He knows it all. He has the answers for you. He is the answer. He is the answer. So I want to talk a little bit about grief, which I have mentioned was my, and still is, my particular struggle for this year, 2023. Um, It will likely be a struggle for a long time. Uh, You may have had a similar struggle, maybe going through the same thing right now. So I'm really hoping that I can help you with some scripture. So in 2022, we'll backtrack a little bit here. um, Our family had suffered a number of losses. There were six people that we lost. And in 2022, I just so happened to, toward the end of the year, I reread the book of Job. And if you've never read it, it is, it is wonderful to read. Um, it contains so many lessons. And I came to understand why God wanted us to know about Job and his life. There are just so many lessons in his story that can help us. If you don't know the story of Job, he, all at once, he lost so much. He lost all his children. He lost his property. He lost his animals. Um, he also became very sick. Um, ended up in so much pain, but so much what we learned from his book is just by his reaction. He was a godly man. And I, I just jotted down a quick list here of some of the things that I feel really should be highlighted with the book of Job. He's such an example to us. Job never loses his faith all throughout. He never loses his faith. And what does he do? He turns to God in prayer. We learn from the book of Job that God is sovereign. He is a sovereign God. He is over everything. We also come to understand that God has his reasons that things happen. We may not always understand. And part of our job, I think, is maybe to try to seek to understand what God's reasons might be. But in the book of Job, um, God has his reasons why Job suffers these losses. Um, and you know, things are happening... God is doing his own things for his own reasons, and it's behind the scenes sometimes. So we have to know that that can happen in life. The book of Job is also an example to us. A lot of people ask the question, why do bad things happen to good people? The book of Job is a very, very good example of that. Again, we don't always know the reasons, but we have to trust God that there is a reason why things are happening the way that they're happening. Now, In 2023, I realized um, at the beginning of my grief journey, the very, very early moments, I realized something, that I had a really big decision to make, a big choice to make. 
I have known of so many people who suffer loss and they immediately turn on God. If there were God, he wouldn't let this happen. Why is God letting this happen? Why is he being so cruel? And they turn away from God and they forsake their relationship with him. And I really had to think to myself, is that, is that going to be where I'm at? Is that how I'm going to approach this? Am I going to turn away from God? My, really in the end, your, your only real source of help. Am I going to suffer the loss that I just suffered and lose God too somehow? And I decided, no, there is no way I'm going to lose both. I can't change what happened, but I am sure not going to lose God. I am going to turn to him for everything to get through this. And I want him to work through me to the benefit of others. Because so many other, when there's a loss, it doesn't occur in a vacuum or it doesn't just happen to you. A loss typically affects many, many people. Right. So if I can allow God to maintain my relationship with him and allow him to work through me to the benefit of others somehow, yeah, you can bet I want to be able to do that. So just some of the scripture that really helped me, I'm going to read to you Psalm 23. And I know a lot of you probably already know it, um, but this is to the benefit, maybe if you need a little reminder of what it says, or a lot of people have never heard it before. So let me read Psalm 23. It create It contains lines that are just hugely helpful. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That, my friends, is powerful. That is the word of God. That is who God is for us. He is our comfort. He is going to get us through. Trust him. So I also found a lot of comfort in Philippians 4. All of it is wonderful. I'm going to read you two verses that really stand out to me. Philippians 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. His peace is going to surpass any, any human explanation or understanding. Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. He gets you through. Let's look at Psalm 34, verse 18. This also really helped me. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Let's look at Matthew 5, verse 4. This helped me also. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And we know that Christ said that during the Sermon on the Mount. Hugely helpful. So really, I have to say, during my grief walk, I have never been so close to God. You know, we, we think of loss and the horror of loss, um, but we look for God, what God is doing in that. God can make good things come from things that are certainly not good. He can be glorified through all of this. Part of what's happening is a strengthening in my relationship and hopefully in a lot of people's relationships with God. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope, we as Christians have hope. Let's remember that. And I think it's so important to know and understand that God, 
God loves all of us. And it's not something that we can stop. He does not stop loving us. A horrible year, his love is not gone. It does not stop. A tough year does not negate God's love. I am going to read for you a much known and loved verse. So many of you are going to know it, but I'm reading it for the benefit of those who do not. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's think of the hope that is contained in that statement. Everlasting life is everlasting life. It's forever. It's eternity with him. So I want to share just a little something, um, some things about my church, some things that happen at church. One one sermon we were at in, um, and this, this pertains directly to, to God's love, what I just spoke about. In uh, January of 2023, the pastor was, he had just finished singing and he, you know, he was going to begin the sermon and he just, he started just shouting to us, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. He wanted everybody in that congregation, there were hundreds of us there. He wanted everyone to just know that God loves them and feel God's love. And then in turn, the congregation all started shouting it. So you can imagine hundreds of people shouting, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. We were just shouting at the top of our lungs. And, you know, one of my kids said to me after a while, it was, it was pretty intense, what, you know, what was up with all that? And I'm like, you know what? We know God loves us. We know it. But we get lots of new visitors to that church every week. Think about all the people who come in in despair. They don't know that God loves them. But now they have an auditorium full of people just shouting, God loves you. We want them to feel that. We want them to know God's love. We want them to get saved. We want them to know that Christ is their Savior and accept Him as their Savior. So it was just a really beautiful moment in the church, and hopefully it helps some people who might have been despairing or even close to the end of their rope or lost in some way. So that was one just really beautiful thing that I wanted to share about our church. Another thing is, um, and this hopefully can benefit anyone else who has suffered loss. At my same church, um, there was a group meeting called Grief Share. And I had never heard about this before, but I, I said to friends, I'm struggling. I can't do this alone. And two friends recommend, two dear friends recommended to me Grief Share. And they're like, hey, you know what? It's meeting. It has, it's already started, but you can join it at any time. It's meeting at your church. So within a couple of days, I was right there. The group meet, meets weekly. And um, what is Grief Share? It is um, a couple, their last name is Guthrie. The wife's name is Nancy Guthrie. They put together, after losing two babies to genetic disease, they put together a series of videos that are presented each week about loss and about facing loss as a Christian. And let me tell you, this whole series was invaluable. It's just so precious, so helpful. Um, there's a workbook that goes with it, and it really helps you to view loss in a godly way. Um, they interview a number of people. There's always time at the end. Um, after the videos, there's always a leader for the group, and our leader was wonderful. We're just so blessed, and it, it helps you. It lifts you up. It helps you get through, and then you hear other people's stories, too, and you know you start caring about them and their loss and you start praying for them and you have people praying for you and you you know you get so many chances to really share and just work through it and I went through um, you can do the group more than once um, because I had joined kind of in the middle the first time I went through the whole series again highly recommended grief share it was hugely hugely helpful now Nancy Guthrie the wife she is also a writer and I read some of her books, and I want to recommend one in particular. I want to just hold this up here for everyone. Hearing Jesus speak into your sorrow. Let me just show you this and give you a really good chance to look at it, because this also got me through. It's still getting me through. Okay, she has got so much wisdom in here. She tells her own story of loss, and just she pours through the scripture, and pours through the scripture, and pours through the scripture, and she shows you how she has gotten through. Um, and she really delves into um, the topic of loss and how Jesus himself, when you think about his life, he led a life. 
you know, when we think of his pain and suffering, we tend to think of the cross. That makes sense that we kind of jump right there. Um, but all throughout his ministry, he was uh, pursued. They wanted to kill him many, many times. He had people disappointing him, turning his back on him, hating him, yet he died for all. Um, so part of her book is, is showing us how Christ suffered, how we can share in his suffering, and how he understands our suffering. And I, I, the, the book is so deep, I couldn't possibly do it justice here. I go back and reread it just as a refresher every now and then. Hugely helpful and just highly, highly recommended. And I wanted to really end on a note of hope because we are Christians. We know how it all ends, right? It's tough right now, but the hope is in tomorrow. Okay, as a Christian, we, we can never forget that. As Christians, we know that we will see our loved ones in heaven again, period, end of story. Okay, we will see them. There is also, and I did a video once before, I think there's pretty good evidence that although we can never know the time, that the rapture, you know, we may be the generation that doesn't have to die. The rapture may be happening soon. Jesus might really be coming soon. It all may be sooner than we think that we see our loved ones again. So let's focus on being prepared for that. We're told in scripture to, to be prepared, to always be kind of watching for the return of Jesus. So let's focus on that, right? It might be sooner than you think. And I, I want us to really think on when that time comes that we are all together in heaven again. It is so important to understand that as Christians, we do not suffer the second death. We die once. Okay, but we have eternal life. We don't go to hell. We do not get cast into the lake of fire. So it is so important for us to understand that once we're in heaven together all again, death has been defeated. And let me just read you some scripture pertaining to that. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 26. I wrote this kind of small. Let me get my glasses. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So that that is straight from scripture. It is so encouraging, so reassuring. Okay, let's look to one last verse. Revelation 21 verse 4. I need my glasses. Revelation 21 verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. My friends, those are God's promises from his word to us. Please, let's end the year 2023, whatever may have happened, let's end it on a note of hope. Let's look to 2024, not with dread, but let's be hopeful. Okay, friends, to God be the glory. I hope this helped in some way. Okay, I will be seeing you again soon. God bless and goodbye for now.